Hey there, internet. So, what do you do when you can't leave your house? Um, well, I decided, weirdly, that I was going to modify this knife here. And the screw that came in here is this little bitsy thing. And in the first 10 minutes of owning this knife, I dropped the little bitsy screw on the floor and spent 20 minutes looking for it. So I decided to make this little button. It lets me do a one-handed opening. Um, it, I can tighten it and loosen it without a tool, although it's a little slick. Um, but I can do it. And in order to get this nice and flat, uh, I actually broke out my old lapping plates. And while I was doing that, I thought to myself, well, I haven't touched these things in quite a while, um, probably two years. And um, interestingly, this video of me making these plates is my most popular video on YouTube. Uh, it gets a ton of hits on it. I have no idea why so many people are interested in, in rubbing um, three pieces of metal together. But, um, so anyway, you know, I got inspired. Uh, I, I finished this thing up. I'm going to do a couple more attempts at this. Um, it's a fun little project. Uh, but, but I guess what I wanted to do is just talk a little bit about how I finished these plates up. And my goal in taking these to the next level was, um, now when I did the first project I didn't have an optical flat, but I got one since then. And in order to use the optical flat, you really need to be able to, um, you need to be able to have a reflective surface that's almost like a mirror. And um, I don't know if it's going to show up in the camera. I'll give it a try, but uh, it's, this is pretty reflective at this point. Um, I'd say it's, you know, it's 60% reflective, something like that. Um, I took this down to one micron. Um, I only did one pass at one micron. Um, I think that where I left off the other video, I had, I think I had done 500 grit. So I did seven micron and took a look at it and noticed that I still had some low spots uh, in a couple areas. So then I went back to the 500 grit. I did 40 motions, rotated it, 40 motions, and I did that for the whole series of A, B, C, uh, or, you know, I'm not going to go into the whole rotation. You guys can look that up. But I did 40 motions at 500 grit. Then I walked, cleaned it off. I did another 40 motions at 500 grit. So I did two full laps um, at 500 grit. Then I went to the 7 micron. Then I went to the um, 1 micron. And I'm going to show some footage of the uh, filming the uh, flatness through the, the optical flat. Um, but before I do that, I just wanted to talk very quickly about a couple of the things that I would have done differently if I were doing this. Um, the first thing I just want to point out, here's a clean Kimtech wipe. And I just want to show you what happens when you try to, when you try to clean the surface. I mean, it essentially just shreds this material. And it doesn't really get anything clean. Um, it's pulling a little stuff out of there. And I definitely have a couple spots that are no good. But um, you can't just use a paper towel, obviously, because paper towels are abrasive. Um, you can use Kimtex, but you, you're going to get all kinds of all, all kinds of material in here. Um, now, my the the thing that I cut my abrasive was mineral spirits, but it kind of leaves a residue. It takes a while to dry. Um, the next thing I did is actually try to use acetone. It was a terrible mistake. So if you're going to do these plates and you have any of of the black paint. Uh, left on these surfaces down in here or down in here, the acetone will essentially turn that into you know a, a, a thinner black paint, and your whole surface is going to get coated with black paint. Um, I would recommend that the first thing you do is you, if again if you're using mineral spirits to cut your abrasive, that you um, take a toothbrush and you know have a bowl or something that you can set the mineral spirits in and kind of rub everything off, get it fairly clean, um, dunk it, and then if you have a compressor to blow it off, let it dry, 
um, in between, you know, in between your different grits. For your final cleaning, uh, what I would do is I would do that process. Um, but what I found is I soaked it down with alcohol, which isn't going to leave any kind of residue. It's going to dry quite a bit quicker. And I think I did four cycles where I soaked it down. I kind of rubbed all the plates on each other, um, blew them off of the air gun, and then rinsed and repeated until I, until I felt like when I, was, when I could rub it with a Kimtech on one of these little squares and too much stuff didn't come uh, didn't come off. I obviously got to change the uh, timeout on my silly light here. And then it does not see me, even though it's pointed right at me. Um, but you don't want to have any black stuff popping up on, on your wipe. Um, you know, you could try to use um, a lintless cloth, but I really think that the um, the little burrs in here are gonna are gonna catch on that. So. You know, I, 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 nobody commented in the previous video on whether or not I should try to deburr these edges. Um, when I lapped this, I didn't really, I didn't go full steam because the surface finish on this knife, this is only an uh, $8 knife, it's 12 bucks on Amazon. Um, the surface finish on this knife isn't that great, so spending a whole lot of time, you know, getting this thing to be a mirror, perfect mirror finish didn't, didn't really make any sense. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it did a really good job. It got it nice and flat. I actually looked at it on the flat. Um, I'm going to take another piece of material, a larger piece of material, and and fully lap it down with these plates, and then take that under the flat. I'll go ahead and record that as a follow-up video to this. Um, but anyway, so don't use acetone. 100% uh, isopropyl alcohol is what I used for the for the final cleaning stage. And uh, I was really happy with that. Um, the other thing I would say is, you know, I didn't have a lathe that was big enough to chuck this up. So what I did is I, I just stuck it in my mill and and ran my 50 millimeter cutter um, across this side and this side, and then I I cut these slots in here with the CNC machine. Um, the slots, the slot cutting was actually the easiest part. But what I would recommend that you do, first thing is, if you have a big enough mill or, or a big enough lathe, go ahead and, and, and surface this down on the lathe and take all this black stuff off. Um, if you can, try to get some acetone and clean all this, this gunk out of these recesses if you're going to use this terrible material. Um, the reason for that is that because this surface is so uneven, these are not parallel. Um, and if I put these on a flat surface, um, they're gonna have a little teeter, which is which is not great when you want to use them for lapping. I mean, you could you can set these on a cloth; it'd probably be good enough. But if if I were to do it again, I would I would you know again if I had the biggest the the biggest a uh, big enough lathe, I would surface this down on the lathe first. This is like a comedy routine. I would surface this down on the lathe first, and then um, I would bore out this this middle also. The reason I would bore the middle out and I would make them all the same diameter is um, for your work holding when you're when you're rubbing these plates together um, if you could have an expanding armor that arbor that goes in the middle of this and holds the, the piece in place that would be really handy for for holding the work while you're actually doing these hours of, of rubbing the plates on each other um, if I didn't have the lay that was the right size at the bare minimum I would put I would put flats on both sides of this um, and make sure they're parallel to the faces so that I got, I did a better job of making the top and the bottom faces parallel. And then if you wanted to hold those flats, you can put them in a vise. Um, I actually used a Jorgensen clamp um, that worked pretty well. Now, I could have gone back and done that, but I'm afraid that because I've already done all this surfacing, any change that I make to any of these surfaces, if I cut the skin on this face, if I try to surface this outside edge, um, the stresses in the material are going to get relieved in different places and the thing is likely to move. So I left it alone. It's not perfect. I would definitely do that differently if I had to do this all over again. Um, if you've watched Tom Lipton's uh, video on ox tools, um, it's probably, you're probably better off ordering the, 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 the plates from uh, Granger or wherever he ordered those plates um, than to actually do the, the weights. They're really not that much more. This was more of a, 
you know, is this even possible? I, it was really, I wasn't, I didn't think I'd get this good of a, a result. And, um, you know, I really wanted to just see if it was possible to take something as commodity as, you know, five pound weights and, and turn them into something useful. So those are my thoughts on um, what, I, what I would have done differently. Um, you definitely want to cut these grooves in here. The grooves that this, this size groove may be a little bit too small. I might change that if I were to go through this again. I'll probably never do this again, by the way. Um, these should last me for, for quite a long time. And so, yeah, I guess at this point, um, take a look at the footage on, on the optical flats. So here's uh, an attempt to photograph the fringes. I'm using a green LED because I don't have a single I don't have a single wavelength laser. But I would say that this looks not too bad. These lines are pretty even where I can where I can actually see them. So right in here, they're really nice and straight. Yeah, that's definitely showing up on the camera. So I I, I don't really know how to measure these. Um but I'd say those look real good. See a big fringe right there. I don't know why this side is being difficult. Yeah, that's definitely showing up. Yeah, that's a good shot. So red's working really well. Green, I thought green would work better, but I think the the wavelength for the flat is actually closer to the red. Now, you can see them in there, but they're really close. And that looks like a really good flat spot. Which I'm a bit surprised because I, I didn't think around this giant void there would be, it would be very flat. But it, it doesn't seem like this open spot has created big issues. It looks actually really good. That looks good there. And those look really parallel. Let me uh, look at this other one here. There. That's a great shot. So it's it's uh, not the width between the lines, it's the it's how parallel those lines are. That's gonna show you. Let me see if I can't tweak the focus in just right. So again on this one over the void. It's not too bad. It's, it's definitely not perfect. There's there's a little curve in this one. And here's a spot where maybe I'm, I've got a burr that's flipped up. So 
So the other way to do this is um, is to instead of looking at this surface, which is not, you know, it's reflective. I mean, you can see you can see uh, details in it. I may see if I can um, lap something on the plate and then take a look at that because um, it'll be easier to clean. Number one. And number two, I'll have a I'll have a overall more f f flat surface, and um, maybe that'll be the next thing that I try to do. Thanks for watching the footage on the optical flats, and thanks for watching. If you have any comments, leave them down below, and uh, hopefully you can fill your quarantine with uh, with something useful like uh, making lapping plates.